Welcome to Bex Bug Out Survivor and I have with me here my pack containing my British modular sleep system and what I've done is I've made some very very minor modifications but them modifications um, work extremely well it elevates the core temperature traps a lot more heat in certainly an improvement and them improvements are worth doing I think as we do this, I'm going to have a brew. I haven't had one all morning. If you just want a warmer, tighter seal, it, it can be done in 30 seconds. So I've tried it and it really does increase its warmth a lot. It's going to be a nice old day. So this is the two part sleeping bag and it's two part because it's designed to be used in conjunction with your existing Gore-Tex bivvy bag. Here's the way it was designed to be used, tropical bag here to be placed inside this bag which will take me down to 10 degrees or minus 10 rather get a little more R value combining them both together Maybe now with both together instead of having a minus 10 uh, that Celsius comfort rating I could probably take that down to minus 20 a whole lot warmer when you add in the Gore-Tex bivvy bag without the outer um, Gore-Tex I'm not too sure this is the hood for that tropical the hood itself tightens up and then it has a shoulder which tightens this part here when you tighten it it absolutely restricts round the neck and it feels like you're being choked for the night it's not nice another minor flora found with the system not the actual bag the bag is brilliant is the outer bag here whether you use it with or without the lightweight tropen this is its face hole and it can be something that size or something that size but if you move your head to the side the aperture stays there and the cold air rushes in so a couple of problems was the air rushing in through the small opening and being restrictive around the neck and the cure is simple I use this lighter weight bag to go on the outside rather than the inside that's solution one it's a very simple fix that one but if I want to bear sleep you know with, and take my clothes off there's a lot of velcro to it all and I have removed as much of the velcro to both bags as I could for instance this drying pocket here used to have two large pieces of velcro there and there and even if you sleep just with your t-shirt you can feel it rubbing it's not nice so I removed all unnecessary velcro and I do state unnecessary I've left the female the male's gone I've got a, a different idea for that the zip comes down and crashes anyway the actual velcro does nothing to keep 
that zip from coming down at all. It's only designed to keep it over your shoulder. But as this is now going to be an outer bag rather than an inner bag, that fact doesn't matter. It would also have um, a loop of fabric and two tapes which go in and you tie the inner to the outer. I'd rather have it independently supported and the reasons for that will become clear towards the end. So the loops have been removed, the tabs have been removed, all the unnecessary velcro has been removed. Now I'm going to put the existing outer which was the central zip as my main bag the former inner bag which was the tropical here will now be my outer bag so I've reverse M rolls hence no requirement for the tape and loop I cut it with scissors or a knife and then just singed the end of it there that went together a lot faster when you don't have to tie it in so now this former inner is the outer I was saying how this piece here once it's toddled up has the effect of strandling you and the effect of having this as the outer which is now the inner this aperture for the face no longer um, has cold air coming in because I can cinch this down and at this point I would really only use the hood of this now inner sleeping bag let's leave this hood uh, loose like that so this is the central zip bag which is first then this the former inner is now the outer so it still blocks all the, the um, wind from getting in through that zip I'm not going to use this outer hood I want to see if them problems have been resolved which I know they have but I'll demonstrate anyway you can see whether I lie on my side or my back this aperture here comes with me side sleeping or lying on my back I can turn back to my side and the importance of that is not having air rushing in down your neck the minute you've got air rushing in down your neck any sleeping bag whether it's um, a modular system something you bought from a supermarket you need a neck baffle that's where this part comes in the outer and this is the reason I only use the one hood when this new outer comes over me like that and I start zipping up it tightens up anywhere the air is going to get in around my neck and that is a big bonus just not having air rushing in when the bags were reversed um, I'm gonna have to think it through yeah I had the lightweight bag central zip side zip sorry left going over first and then zip the outer and every time I move my head like I said the aperture on the existing outer bag would be away from me if I turn my head I think you can see by that demonstration I've left an aperture there where the air is getting in and it gets trapped 
that cold air between the two bags. Now I want to trap warm air between the two bags, not cold air. Just by switching the bags around has cured that issue. As you can see, I can get the tropical bag pretty tight without it strandling me. It's a lot warmer. I, I knew when before I bought this system that that may be an issue because I had the same issue using my old tropical bag and my pattern 90 which I used to use in that combination and then I soon put the tropical bag on the outside I knew from experience that that would be the case there is no room for cold getting in here it can't get in anywhere else there is no stitching on the outside this is just a shell of pertex and here's the baffling here and I can actually pull the two parts away from each other that is a separate shell windproof shell so here where the stitching is the air can't escape to the outside because it has the pertex shell here but the minute you combine Gore-Tex bivy bag to anything you'll see straight away that it alters the R value big time within 15 minutes I was venting everything undoing this neck bit to actually let heat escape so if you're a cold sleeper this is awesome now remember this is a system it contains two bags and that's what the system is a double sleeping bag system some people who just compare systems to sleeping bags it's not in the same field you'll never understand add in a Gore-Tex bivy and you are proper good to go so the problems I had was that air was coming in around the face hole switching inner to outer like that has cured that I can get the central zip done up really tight and as I turn that breathing port there or face port comes with me because it's not tied in so how do I stop it all from twisting when I turn it's pretty easy I'm gonna pull this out again and just demonstrate but in my pack I have my Adventure 38 I think 5.5 when I say put it in I do mean put it in not underneath it goes between the two layers because it's mummy shaped like that but then again you would get a rectangular pad if you don't like that idea and it would go under everything so the lightweight bag is now on the outside and then on top is where I'm getting in it's all contained how I want it I'm gonna go into my pack I've got a massive dry sack here it's got to be about maybe 80 90 liters I'm gonna roll my sleeping bag which incorporates the pad and get it into here okay at this point is I want to treat this like a lady so I'm gonna sit on it and put a bag on it great for a night out canoeing I'm gonna get even more air out of this just to show you that it will absolutely compress down to almost nothing I'm just gonna put my knees on this and flatten it get all the air out now my sleeping bag system is thin it's exactly the same kit if you've forgotten already I contained my air mattress and that's for ground insulation you could put whatever mat you want in here whether it's foam rubber 
inflatable, non-inflatable, none of anything I am doing here needs to be replicated in any manner whatsoever. If you do want to replicate it, then the British version of the Corinthia is called the UK Modular Sleep System. It's made by a Spanish company called Fetka, which and it is the clone to the Defence 4 sleep system. Once it's paired up with that Gore-Tex outer bivy, that was stupidly hot. Putting the second hood over, I was cooking. It's the hood that makes all the difference to a system, whether you have one hood on or two. Now with a system, which is different to a bag, take that off a minute. Yeah, um, with a system, you would have two hoods because it's two bags. I so far can only get one hood on before I start cooking and that's using it in conjunction with the Gore-Tex Bivy, of course. The Buffalo system is pretty good. I'm comfortably warm, totally stripped off, just above freeze point. After that, I put a softy suit on if it's going to dip below zero. I don't know how much lower than freeze point I can take the Buffalo system. Again, two bags. So the first part of the uh, project was quite simple. I explained the problems, was the breathing port was moving, or the face port, getting strandled using the trope and inner, but swapping the bags over, I've sealed right down, round the neck without it strandling me, and I've got zero air getting in which also of course has the effect of retaining a lot of that heat that's trapped around the neck here which is the biggest place a sleeping bag is going to lose its heat is air will look for places to escape cold air will look for places to get in and if you haven't got a good baffle to go around your neck bring a scarf uh, some sort of scrim scarf like that and you can make an artificial baffle for around your neck but drafts make cold I've just done both parts for, for um, probably 40 quid I think 21 quid for the central zip and I did 18 or 19 quid for the tropical bag which is now my outer but my bivy bag is Gore-Tex it's MTP and it is the large. Now when I bought the Fesca system, Uncle Fesca I'm going to call it I think, um, yeah when I bought that Green Adams family bag or two bags, here's what I didn't tell you in the first video. I bought the central zip to fit, to a good fit because I am a medium build because I'm not very tall, but I did get the inner side zip which is now my outer a large because I knew I was going to make this modification so I had to have the lightweight bag longer and wider to incorporate the air pad had I not have done that it would have been really really tight once it's inflated to try and zip everything up so whether you have a mummy shaped inflatable or rectangular um, sleep pad roll it with your two-part system get yourself an 80 or 90 litre uh, dry sack and as you saw I can squash all the air out of it it goes to about four inch thick even if you don't cut out the velcro and the tabs you can still swap them around and you'll notice a remarkable difference of trapping in the air and not having the warm air escape that's a fix you can do for free without any modifications i just chose to take out the velcro because I was sleeping in it just in my t-shirt sometimes just in my bare skin getting in in my boxes and all that velcro was rubbing and it's the difference between having a good night's sleep and not having a good night's sleep so a simple fix for two problems there and it's worked well for me 
So what I want to do is remove the zip off my sleeping bag and put a much better one on. So a double-ended zip allows it to be opened from both the foot end and head end. So what I want to do is remove this zip here and I want to cut as close to the zipper as I can and yet still leave this edged material of grow gain intact. take my time and here's one part of the zip which has now been detached leaving this section here which I'm gonna sew directly onto with the new zip that is how it'll look the foot end I have this strengthening V section I need to tuck that zip into there and line up both the webbing of the sleeping bag and the zip and I'm going to start pinning it I'm using a polyester thread and I'm going to hand sew it all and I find it quite therapeutic anyway to hand sew so the stitching is about three mil apart and every so often I'm going to come through the loop I just sewn with the needle and lock it in and I'm going to work all the way up so the zips all sewn on I have some excess zip left over so I need to trim that and I'm going to use the existing teeth here as a stopper let's cut that about there okay there's the zip there I'm going to take two of the teeth off where I've just cut. And jigsaw these in like this. That's going to form a stopper. I'm going to get some heat on that off a stove or a hot knife or something and melt all that together. So that's me done. Until next time, take care of yourself and don't forget to take care of each other as well. We're all in this together.